inside and help mom. Do we have clearance for takeoff? Systems are good. Roger that. In three, two, one. It's not a game, it's a red skin. Transsteel 2700 that you see right here. First things first, the cart or the running gear that I installed the machine on, that is an option. So if you're looking at the base model package, it doesn't include this cart. So you're gonna have to add it on or you can build your own. It is a sturdy cart. Uh, the second thing is, it does come with a primary. So the primary is a 15 foot primary already installed. And when you're looking at the wires or the legs, you'll notice there's four legs. Why is there four legs? Because the Transsteel 2700 runs on single phase or three phase from 208 up to 480 volt power. So in this case, I'm going to be running on single phase power. So what you're going to want to do is determine your plug or your outlet, get that plug or outlet, and then green's ground. You're going to drop your red leg and then you're going to use your white and black. Before you plug it in, make sure you electrical tape the red wire. And we're gonna go ahead and wire this plug on, power this up, and we'll do a brief overview of this. Let's go. You'll notice when you power up the machine on single phase, it'll have phase single on here can't do anything by adjusting the knob so what you got to do is hit this gray cursor key here and then it opens up the faceplate. We're not going to review the faceplate right now. Uh, we'll do that here in a bit but on the front you'll notice some connectors. Here you have a dinge connector or a pigtail. This pigtail allows you to reverse the polarity so if you're running self shielded flux core or if you want to TIG weld with the machine you can reverse the polarity. So the Transsteel 2700 is a multi-process machine, so it does MIG, TIG, and stick. Uh, you'll also notice on here there's an amphenol. So this amphenol is for your TIG torch, for your thumb controls. And then there's also another amphenol port right here to where you can update the machine. Or also maybe you could get a remote control where you can adjust amperage as well. On the front, we have the standard Fronia system connector for the back end of the MIG torch which is standard for all the Fronius machines, including the Transsteel 2200, the 3500, the 5000, and the industrial TPSI units. So it's all commonality consumables. Let's step around and look inside the wire feeder. The side panel where you load the wire in, you'll notice a QR tag. So if you have a QR scanner or an iPhone, just take a picture of it. It will bring you to the landing page of the Transsteel 2700 where you can find operation instructions. One thing that stands out on the side panel is this viewing window. So instead of opening up your side panel to see how much wire you have left, you can look right through this viewing window and you can be like, oh, I have enough wire. Uh, to open up the hinge, you push these two side hinges in, it locks in place. Here you have your clip to hold the wire in place. What you do is you just squeeze the side and it's a pressure fitting and this is a basket. So let's say maybe you had a spool of wire and you wanted to re-spool it on here, you could do that with this. So make sure you don't throw this away. Now this clip is being pressure, so when you let go it locks into place. So you can accommodate a 10 pound spool, so you put your 10 pound spool in, slide it all the way down, or it accommodates a 44 pound spool and you just lock it in down here. Now there is a notch, make sure you line your notch up with your spool so it doesn't free flow. And then also if the tension here seems too tight, there is a brake that you can loosen or tighten. Look at this LED light. So if you don't have your spool in here, it lights up your whole wire feeder. 
So if you did have to do anything on the wire feeder side or anything, it's gonna light it up where you don't need to bring flashlights. Cool little feature. You can set this timer inside the machine settings as well. Let's take a look at the drive wheel assembly. First thing you notice, it's a spring-loaded drive wheel system. Second thing you notice, it's color-coded. So blues for 035, reds for 045, blacks 1 16th. This shows you where to set your tension based on the wire type you're using. Here you can adjust uh, the drive wheels. What I like about them is they're an enclosed bearing. So you're not gonna have grease and contaminants uh, coming out on the welding wire. And then the other thing, you don't need two hands with this system. So you can just drop it, engage the rollers, lock it in. The other thing I like about it is this Fronius system connector clamp. Um, you can have 400 pounds of direct force. The back side, you have your primary on off switch, your two solenoids, one for MIG, one for TIG. And then the other feature on the back that I really like is the onboard uh, air filter. So it comes with a, a stainless steel screen that you can rinse and reuse. The benefits of this is when the fan kicks on, it doesn't d suck all that dust and particulate inside your machine. So we're talking about longevity. Obviously the Transseal 2700 MIG welds, but which wire types, how do you dial in those wire types, and how good of weld quality are those wire types on the Transsteel 2700. We're going to start off with 70S-6 O35 wire diameter with 7525 CO2 on quarter inch A36 mild steel. We're going to run a lap joint and what I'm trying to achieve here is a dime uh, appearance. Um, so if you have any parts that are visual and your customer is asking for a high quality because of appearance, what you need to do is start off at a low wire feed speed and low voltage. So I'm at 205 inches a minute at 16 and a half volts. And I like running a drag here because it makes the dimes stand out. So you're going to do a backward circle motion and then pause in the center. Backward circle motion, pause in center. Backward circle motion, pause in center. And then you're going to do this continuously. Make sure you hit that top edge, otherwise you will get undercut. Now once you have a setting, you can save it as a preset. So I'm going to say this on preset one. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and crank this up to about 425 inches a minute and then our voltage, I'm thinking somewhere around, I don't know, 28.2. Now what I wanna do is try to get this into a spray with 7525. I do suggest 9010 because it helps with getting a lower voltage setting but also spatter reduction. But the reason why you wanna run this high on thicker gauge because you can consistently get good root penetration. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save these on preset number two and check out these welds here. If you're doing any type of open root uh, plate, butt joints, thin gauge material, galvanized, there's a steel root program on the Transsteel 2700. It's a very smooth, stable arc. Um, you can see right here I'm running a open root butt joint on some thinner gauge material. And I got a pretty large or excessive gap on there. I'm running about 145 inches per minute. But you can see how stable it is. It's bridging this gap, no problem. All you have to do is get your drag angle in the right position and then stay in the puddle. I'm gonna save this to three and check out the front and back. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to aluminum wire. We're running 5356, 360 force. And what's awesome about a Transsteel 2700 is you don't need any spool guns or push poles. 
And you can feed this through your 15 foot lead that comes standard without any wire feed issues. So to feed it, you just pull the torch down and then it will jog automatic. But for 5356, we're gonna set the machine to SP 045, 100% argon. And then I'm gonna set the wire feed speed somewhere around 450 inches a minute at 20.6 volts. Now this is quarter inch plate, but you can hear it's spraying really nice. Uh, I even put a knot in the torch just to show the consistency. We're running 100% uh, argon. Now with aluminum, you do want to run a push angle, which is what I'm running right here. But with 5356, it's a little bit more drastic to eliminate the soot uh, and contaminants. I'm going to go ahead and save this to program number four and check these welds out. Let's go ahead and swap these rollers out to 030. So white represents 030 wire diameter. These are really easy to replace. There's no loose parts. Just make sure you watch your wire tension based on the recommendations. But we're running 030, 308 stainless with 98.2 CO2, which is what I recommend. So we're on SP for wire type, 030 for diameter, and 7525 for gas mix. We're gonna set it to 600 inches a minute at 23.6 volts. So this will get us to a spray. Again, make sure you use 98.2 CO2. I use a backward forward motion. And with stainless, everything is about speed and heat distortion. So you wanna keep a nice short arc, contact tip to work distance, make sure you got good gas coverage. And you don't wanna burn all that chromium oxide. So keep your travel speed consistent. Let's save this on number five. And now we got five presets. Number one is for 70S6. Number two is a hot setting. Number three is an open root setting. Four is aluminum. Five is stainless. So we got five easy jobs. One through five, easy as that. As you can see, there's a lot of versatility with the Transsteel 2700. You, know, you can choose a variety of wire types, diameters, gas mixtures. Not only that, you can save five easy jobs right on the faceplate of the machine. Now there's two different packages. Package number one is a MIG package. Package number two is a TIG Complete. Both setups come with 030 and 035 dry wheel kits. Also 10 contact tips each for both those sizes. Now let's say you want to weld aluminum. I do suggest 360 force wire, so you're going to want to order 052 contact tips and a 1 16th inner liner. Other than that, you should be ready to go. Now let's take a look at stick and TIG. Let's go. Anytime you're switching from MIG to constant current, which would be stick or TIG, I always remove the welding lead just because it will be hot and it won't be isolated. So I'm gonna take our ground cable, put it in on minus, and then our stinger or stick lead to positive. Now, in the bottom right-hand corner, you have a gray button, and you're gonna switch it to stick. We're gonna run eighth inch 7018, and I like it around 125 amps. And then our DIG, which is how soft or how aggressive the arc is. I like it at about 40. So uh, in the background menu, you can hit the two gray buttons and you have a hot start current. So you can set it all the way up to 200%, but I like it at about 135%. And then your timer, about 0.3 seconds. Make sure anti-sticks turned on, hit the buttons, get out. Give it a little tappy tap. Let's strike. That hot start really helps on striking the 7018. Now, if you struggle with it, 7018 can be a pain because if you don't strike the first time, silicon forms on the end. You got to clip it with your welpers and then try to restrike again. But run a drag angle. Don't apply too much pressure, but you want to make sure your arc isn't really wide. So you want a really short arc length. I almost finished this whole fillet weld with one rod, got really close, but check out the weld seam here. Let's do a cat pass with 532 7018. Let's go up to 180 amps, which is our maximum amperage on 230 volt single phase. And I'm gonna set our dig to about 50 with the 532. And let's give it a little tappy tap. And it does start smooth, hot start to the rescue. Now with this cat pass, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some fill and I'm gonna wash it to the top and bottom of the toes of the last pass. And what's really nice about 532 is you can get double the fill. So if you're doing any type of multi-pass piping or if you're doing any type of bevel joints, 532 is really great for cat passes. So again, you're gonna wash it to the top and bottom, check it out, still had a lot of uh, rod left over after this, give it a little chip, there it is. <laughs> Thank you.
Let's go ahead and switch to TIG mode. So in the bottom right hand corner, we switch to TIG. You can choose between a 2T or a 4T. A 2T is arc on, arc off, and a 4T is trigger lock. On 230 volt single phase, we can go up to 260 amps and down to 10 amps. Now, I'm just gonna do a lift arc TIG on quarter inch stainless. So I'm gonna set this around 150 amps. So we're at 150 amps in DC on the Transseal 2700. Keep in mind, there's no AC capabilities. Now, there's three ways of striking an arc and TIG. One is uh, scratch start, the other one is lift arc, and then the third one is high freak. So this machine does not have high frequency included. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do lift arc, and with lift arc, we're gonna use these thumb controls. The biggest misconception is uh, pulling the trigger and then coming in and touching right away. Uh, what I suggest doing is you come in touch your tungsten with a 45 degree angle, and then pull the trigger, lift off, and about a 16th of an inch, and then the arc will strike without sticking. So flip that hood down, get your 45 degree angle. And then let off the trigger. Now let's do that again. So we're gonna get our hood down, get our 45, touch, Pull the trigger, let off. Okay now, okay, now what we're gonna do is not try to fall, but we're, we switched it to four step, which is a trigger lock. So you can set your start currents, your up slopes, and your down slopes. What I like about a uh, start current about 30 to 40 percent lower than your main it gives you time to get adjusted uh, so we turned on pulse so let's show you what this is four step you turn it on to start and then let off and then it's like a trigger lock and then you hit it again to shut off so again we're gonna get our 45 touch pull the trigger pull away okay we're in our start current now we let off trigger and hold down till done. Tack function is a pretty sweet feature. Uh, it's patented by Fronius, but what it does is it adds pulse just at the start. So you can set tack in the Transseal 2700 for how many seconds and it pulsates the two base materials together. So here I'm going to do a uh, 3 16 lap joint and I'll show you how it's the tack function works. So again, you're going to angle the torch like before, touch, pull the trigger, Thanks again for joining me. We did put this Transseal 2700 to the paces. We ran MIG, a bunch of different wires. I couldn't run them all. I'd be whooped. Uh, we ran stick, some 7018. We ran TIG. Now, keep in mind, there's two different packages on the Transseal 2700. There's a MIG only, and then a Transseal 2700 complete, which comes with your stinger for stick welding, and then your TIG torch for TIG welding. Again, the cart or running gear that you see right here that holds this bottle rack, that is an option. So if you are looking for anything like that, make sure you add that to the cart uh, when you check out. Questions, do you have any questions? One question that you might have, can you run the 2700 off a generator? Well, guess what? I ran everything off a generator. So yes, it works fantastic, if you are wondering. So it is generator friendly. Now, power, you can run it on 208 to 480 single phase or three phase. 
Now on single phase, you're limited to amperage. So on single phase, you can get 220 amps output MIG, 180 amps output stick, and 260 amps output TIG. Now let's say you work in an industrial fabrication shop and you do have three phase power, you will get full amperage output at 100% duty cycle at 170. Now, I do appreciate it again. Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, get ready for future content. Thank you. Thank you.